you doing? I'm trying to calculate my body fat percentage with these skin calipers here. Why don't you just use ADP or air displacement plethysmography? What is that? ADP is a method of measuring body composition indirectly by way of detecting pressure and volume changes within a closed space. It's often used by athletes, doctors, and even the military to track overall health, get an idea of athleticism, and create highly customized workout and nutrition plans. Currently, a device known as the Bod Pod is the most commonly used ADP device. It is referred to as the gold standard. Other methods of measuring body composition do exist. Some of these methods include hydrostatic weighing, electrical impedance, dual energy x-rays, and skin calipers. However, the Bod Pod is more accurate and gives more information than portable devices like electrical impedance and skin calipers. More comfortable than hydrostatic weighing because you don't have to be submerged in water, and more safe than dual energy x-ray because there's no unnecessary exposure to radiation. So how does a device like the Bod Pod actually work? ADP uses the relationship between pressure and volume, also known as Boyle's Law, to measure the volume of a person's body when they're inside an enclosed space. Boyle's Law states that volume and pressure vary inversely with each other through the equation P1V1 equals P2V2. So, using this equation, the Bod Pod is able to determine a person's body volume by measuring pressure responses to small volume changes in an enclosed chamber. The Bod Pod measurement process begins with a baseline measurement of the pressure and volume of the empty test chamber. The Bod Pod consists of two chambers, the test chamber and the reference chamber, with a common wall between the two. In the wall between the two chambers, there is a diaphragm that oscillates during testing to produce small changes in the volume to the test and reference chambers. When the volume increases in one chamber, it decreases equally in the other chamber. The pressure in the two chambers responds immediately to these changes in volume, and the degree to which the pressure changes indicates the size of each chamber. For example, the pressure response in a large chamber is smaller than that of a small chamber. So through this, an initial measurement of pressure and volume can be taken for the empty test chamber of the Bod Pod. Once again, the Bod Pod measures pressure changes and volume inside the chamber to determine that the system is accurately measuring the volume of the 50 liter cylinder. Once calibration is completed, the subject being measured sits inside the chamber. The Bod Pod then performs the same pressure volume measurements again to determine pressure inside the chamber with the subject inside. To compensate for pressure changes, Due to breathing and air volume in the lungs that might interfere with measurements, the subject breathes normally into a breathing tube. The Bod Pod can either directly measure lung volume based on relaxed tidal breathing, use standard prediction equations based on gender, age, and height, or use a previously determined lung volume. Once the lung volume of the subject is determined, the system uses Boyle's Law to calculate the volume of the subject as a whole. Since the Bod Pod already took measurements of baseline pressure and volume, which are P1 and V1 in our base equation, and now has a measurement of the pressure in the chamber with the subject sitting inside the chamber, which is P2, a quick rearrangement of Boyle's Law gives a result for the volume of the subject, which is V2. After volume is determined, body density can be calculated through this simple density equation, weight divided by volume. From there, the percent fat can be determined through the Siri equation. Percent fat equals 495 divided by density minus 450. This Siri equation is derived using the two compartment model. Body composition is made up of fat mass and non-fat mass. Substituting in mass divided by density for volume in the density equation and using the known values of fat mass equals 0.9 grams per milliliter and fat-free mass equals 1.1 grams per milliliter, it eventually simplifies to the Siri equation you see. Different ethnicities have different bone densities, so to accommodate different populations, there are other equations that can be used, like Brozac or Ortiz. Once the fat mass percentage is known, the fat-free mass percentage is determined by simply subtracting the fat percentage from 100. After the procedure is over, 
BODPOD gives you a nifty printout of all this information. It even tells you your resting metabolic rate, which is the minimum calories your body needs to intake in a day to maintain all of your bodily functions. The BODPOD uses the Nelson prediction equation, RMR equals 25.8 times fat-free mass in kilograms, plus 4.04 .04 times fat mass in kilograms. Each kilogram of lean mass and fat mass have known metabolic needs. These are the constants you see, 25.8 and 4.04. .04. Since the BOD pod tells you all the parameters of your metabolism, you can use this feedback in several different ways. Since you know about your body composition and RMR, you can build a nutrition and exercise plan from this information. Additionally, since you know your RMR, there are helpful tools to use that allow you to multiply in your activity level to get a value for the number of calories you need to maintain a certain weight, giving you a good idea of what caloric range you need to remain in to maintain your body weight. This can also be used to determine how many calories you need to gain or lose weight. While this technology is considered to be the gold standard for measuring body composition, it does have a few limitations. First, it's non-transportable, so you need to make an appointment somewhere and actually leave your house to have this test done. It's not easily accessible, so you may want to Google where the nearest bod pod is that is open to the public. Since it is a small chamber, it may be uncomfortable for some people, mainly people who suffer from severe claustrophobia. It also requires minimal movement, so people with Parkinson's disease or small children who have trouble sitting still may have slightly skewed results.